Hello. Hi, everybody. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm coming from Israel, from Jerusalem. And I'm here to take you back to the future. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie, Back to the Future? Yes, yes, I love it. It's one of the classics. It's an amazing movie. And unfortunately, I cannot fit all of you in my DeLorean. So we're going to do something else. We're going to do a conceptual trip to the future. In fact, uh, what I want to do is tell you a little bit about the Israeli startup ecosystem. And I can tell you in figures and numbers, and I can tell you a little bit about the technology that is being developed. But I want to take it to another level. Let's see what will happen in, in the year 2042. If we're traveling in time, how, what would we eat? How can we, uh, what kind of transportation will we t use? How is the health going to be, uh, health and, and medicine is going to be looking like? And so on. So, a few examples uh, and a little bit about me. I'm a, a material engineer, uh, also uh, holds a, a degree in pharmaceutical chemistry. I'm a man of accelerators and startups. I founded A2B Startup Accelerator about nine years ago, helping 87 startups raise over $90 million. And I have been a part of all those accelerators that you see here in Germany, in, in um, the United States, in the Czech Republic, in the Balkans, in Macedonia, even here in Kosovo. And um, I'm uh, now working, yep, a board member of Made in Jerusalem and uh, of the uh, Israeli College, of course. In the last five years, I'm investing in startups through two of those vehicles, Launch It Capital and Early Stage VC and People Bees. And if you're interested in how to raise money for your idea, I'm, I'll be here later talking to you about it. And of course, I'm also helping the government in uh, running accelerators. Let's go directly to the technology that we're speaking about, food first. So food is a big issue in the future. Food is a huge issue in 2042. If we're looking at the, sorry, at the idea that the, um, that the UN is actually uh, reporting to us, in the year 2050, we're going to be about 10 billion people. And we have the same planet to accommodate and to feed all those people. And this is a huge challenge. We, we spoke about, just recently, about the SDGs, about the sustainable development goals that the UN is setting for us for the future. Number two is zero hang, uh, hunger, and we have to supply food for everybody. So how can we do it? Uh, the main thing is, of course, protein. Protein is taking most of our resources, and people want to consume protein, of course, from meat, from fish, from chicken, and from soybean, and so on. But we have very limited resources on, on Earth, and we have to use all of them in order to produce it. It's, it's costing us a lot, and it's causing a lot of pollution, and emissions. So if in the past very few people hunted one mammoth, now we see that more and more people are eating cattle, sheep and, and, and cows, and more people are eating chicken, even more people are using and, and consuming eggs. Nowadays more and more people want to consume soybeans, and in the future, as you can see, people are consuming smaller and smaller animals, in the future, we will be f fed by powder that is 100% protein. And do you have any idea how it, we're going to produce it? This is it. It's lavras of fruit flies. And if you think, if you're passing a little bit 
above and beyond the yak factor of it, we are already selling it to the Chinese. They're producing their chicken nuggets out of 100% protein, clear and clean protein that is actually made out of these lavras. And this is a technology change in Israel. We are producing the farms to produce those flies. We are producing the lavras better. We are producing the flies better. It's an entire technology. Let's see one of it. Spark was founded to be a part of a global vision to feed the world without consuming the earth. Flying Spark is a food tech company that developed a technology for production of high quality alternative protein from the oriental fruit fly larvae. In an increasing global need for sustainable sources of protein, we can grow the equivalent of a weight of a cow, 300 to 400 kilograms in one square meter every month. It is an extremely efficient cultivation technology, so efficient as the larvae can multiply its body mass 250 times in just seven days. Nutritional values are best in class. Complete protein, rich in iron, calcium, magnesium, healthy fatty acids, and more. We are offering a wide range of protein products and oils, and we are active in the aquaculture, pet food, and cosmetic spaces, and in the future, human consumption as well. I'm a big believer in collaborations. Our strategy is to collaborate with leading industry champions in every vertical that we are active in. I'm proud to say that Flying Spark is the first insect protein company that went public. We are listed in the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. So now anyone can be a part of our vision. So Flying Spark is not the only solution solving proteins for the world. What about eggs? Do you see any change between this egg and any, any difference between them? Anyone wants to raise a hand? Well, of course, this egg will produce a hand chicken, and this egg will produce a roaster chicken, a male. Why is it important? If you want to have eggs, you want your eggs to grow to be a female chicken, a hen, so they can actually lay more eggs. The roaster chicken is no good for this. So if you get half of the eggs male, you actually have to kill the little chickens that are uh, turning to be males in order to have hen chicken laying eggs. It's the opposite if you want to sell schnitzel and if you want to sell chicken in the supermarket because the hen chicken will use the same amount of space and food and, uh, as the roaster chicken, but the roaster chicken is gonna be 15% bigger. That's 15% more meat at the supermarket. So you wanna have, if you are producing meat, more roasters. And before you ask me, the chicken that lays egg is not the chicken that you eat. Those are different species of, the, of, of chickens. So how can we solve it? One Israeli company had an idea. Let's change the sex of the egg from women to men, or from men into women, or female to, to a male. And they're doing it using sound. A second.
and they're not killing the young male chickens, so we're saving uh, male chicks. So uh, now, swim with me against the, the stream for a second. What about fish? Everybody wants a piece of salmon, it's very healthy. But in fact, we're actually consuming the entire oceans of fish. We're constantly taking fish out of the ocean. And with the growth of population, we're going to destroy the entire marine life. And uh, people want to eat more healthy. They want zero cholesterol and they want a nice piece of salmon. So why not 3D print the salmon? We need to bring a better fish to the world, a better meat alternatives. Ariel came up with a printer that is designed for fish. Ron copied fish molecules using plant molecules. And Gila made the printer and the molecules work perfectly together. So we sourced the best proteins from legumes and we took some algae's extraction for the omega-3s and we squeezed it together into a new novelty machine that we've made and boom, we've got a super salmon filet made entirely out of plants which mimics the same salmon we all love. Yes, just like that, after months of work, they came up with this. This small team of PhDs and OPEC came up with the world's first cooked salmon filet made entirely out of plants. Now I'm just marveling at this. This is, um, it looks really good. Like the color, the orange, the feel, the texture, the fattiness. It looks like a normal salmon. And how does it taste? Wow, that's great. That's amazing, how do you, oh. how do, you do this? It tastes like salmon. <laughs> it melts just like a normal fish. It has the same fatty feel like a salmon and it cooks just like a fish. It has zero cholesterol and lots of omega, but it doesn't have any mercury, no microplastic, and no antibiotics. When this work, we're gonna be the largest fisherman in the world without hurting a single fish. And we're doing the same uh, humane thing that we do with fish, with milk. We are now with a company called Real Milk, producing real milk, cow milk, without a cow. We're doing it in a lab, and we can actually grow the milk to be in large masses and actually supply the world with milk coming from the lab. And it also goes with, uh, of course, meat. So how about the health? How is the health system going to look like in 2042? So if you used to have your health described here and time described here, and you were feeling quite good, there's something wrong with the presentation. I hope it will get better in a second. Suddenly you felt good and suddenly you started to feel bad. And in one point or the other, you decided to go to the doctor, hopefully to get better. In the future, you will feel quite okay. And instead of feeling bad, the toilet is gonna tell you, you have to go to the doctor. And this is not the only preventive health system that we know of. And I'm gonna speak more about it later, but let's see what, what happened to the movie. Oh. There we go. Olive is the world's first truly passive home-based urinary diagnostic solution. It can early detect a wide range of health problems and diseases before symptoms appear, including urinary tract infections, kidney stones, bladder infection, heart failure, dehydration and constipation. It works by combining cutting-edge optics with AI technology, big data analysis and AI-driven recommendations that optimize personal health care. Most of us only get our urine or blood tested when we're not feeling well. And in that case, it's already too late. 
But continuous monitoring is key for early disease detection before we become symptomatic. Olive KG is the only 100% passive continuous monitoring system, checking a person's urine between five to seven times a day. This provides a granular profile and a strong benchmark, which easily flags indicators for both general health and early disease detection. Olive enables both early detection and intervention, leading to improved quality of life, better outcomes, and lower treatment costs. The KG is comprised of two main components, a lead array at the front of the toilet and an array of photodiode detectors at the back. When the light from the lead hits the particular molecule in the urine stream, its energy changes, enabling detection. The KG works regardless of whether or not the bathroom light is on and uses the urine fingerprint to differentiate between users. Changes to a user's profile are flagged and analyzed by caregivers. So, as I mentioned, this is not the, not the only preventive health care system. There are many startup companies that will actually detect with a very small device the right uh, drug for you and actually uh, monitor, you know, the, most of the developing drug nowadays are biological drugs. For example, uh, vaccination against COVID is a biological drug. A small device will actually monitor micro uh, elements out of your skin and will choose the best medicine for you, not for anyone else. It got, it's going to be totally personalized. And this is the, one of many startups that are going to affect very much our uh, health system and medicine. Now, how about driving? But before talking about driving, have you ever encountered a situation where you hold a, you hold a cup of water, in a slight second you know that you're going to spill it and you still spilled it? Anyone felt that? You're, you're holding a cup of coffee, you're thinking to yourself, maybe I'm, gonna, I'm about to spill it, and then you, you still cannot stop yourself from spilling it. You just feel that you're going to do it. This is due to the fact that our brain is working much faster than our muscles and body. We are detecting things, but we cannot actually grab them. Using AI and using machine learning, we can actually teach machines to anticipate our failures according to our behavior. And this is what correction is doing in the, in the automotive and in the aviation industry, avoiding this kind of accidents, avoiding accidents that we could have prevented. A plane crash, a car accident, deleting all the files from the organization's storage. These split-second mistakes can take a heavy toll. If only we knew about them before they happen. What if we tell you that we are actually able to foresee them? Let's explain. There is a major gap between the brain's ability to detect an error and the body's reaction time to correct it. This gap is critical when caused by a human-machine interface. That's the secret. In many accidents we see on the news, the brain recognized the mistake long before it happened, but the body failed to respond quickly enough. So we created Core Actions, an advanced, unique, non-invasive platform that prevents human-machine interface errors with a simple touch. Our unique neuroscience algorithm simply integrates with any human-machine device and recognizes the human intentions based on the brain's early error detection signals and human touch. Then, it translates these signals to actions that prevent the human error in real time. We enable smarter machines for human use. We make it easier for machines to study human behavior. We increase human learning efficiency. 100 people are killed in car accidents every day in the U.S. alone. And 98% of car accidents are caused by human error. We can change that today. And this is just one example. Imagine this system in the airline industry, the medical industry, the military industry, even in our everyday mobile phone market. It can be used wherever technology is present. Core Actions. Technology that can read your mind with a simple touch. 
And in fact, reading your mind in automotive in, is just one aspect of it. Reading your feelings is another. The, the next stage in automotive, of course, is going to be the autonomous vehicles. We're going to see a lot of autonomous vehicles. Here are some new facts or fun facts. Maybe you knew them. The autonomous vehicles are going to be looking quite alike. Everything is going to be just a coverage for a computer. So it's going to be looking like small rooms that travels from one point to another. They're going to be driving empty a lot of the times. Because I'm going to send my kids to school and then ask the car to come back and take me to work. And it's not going to solve the uh, traffic issues with all those cars driving empty back and forth. It's going to know how you feel. You're going to sit in a car that is scattered with detectors. Those detectors are collecting physical aspects about you. Your humidity, uh, um, heartbeats, temperature. Those are going to be translated into feelings and we will know how you feel. And it's going to be a car as a service. It's not going to be something that we own. We're going to call the car to come and pick us. It's going to be used by other people as well. Similar to a taxi, but without a driver. And where does it happen now? Of course, in Tel Aviv. We have about 100 taxis driving alone, taking people from one point to another, without a driver, of course. <laughs> So those of you who saw the driver, this is a pilot, they have to put the driver in the, in the, area, in the car, but he's not touching anything, I can tell you. Uh, the cars are driving by themselves, you just need to put the address, and that's the pilot. And how about schooling? You know, so many things have changed, and yet we're still going to a classroom with pupils, with chairs, the students are asked to open their books and notebooks and copy from the whiteboard. But it's gonna change a little bit. It's gonna change. When I'm thinking about studying something, I'm thinking about a different movie, not Back to the Future. I'm thinking about The Matrix. Mikey, I think he likes it. How about some more? Hell yes. Hell yeah. I know Kung Fu. Show me. And hit me, if you can. So, can we, can we project knowledge directly to your brain? So, one startup, days think they can. And they're actually inviting you to play a game. And in this game, you're doing all kind of silly things that you do in a computer game, but they are also projecting words into both sides of your brain. 
And you don't have to wear a helmet or, or anything, but it is proven that children learned a different language in a few hours. They did a lot of tests, and just imagine that you can fly to Pristina, you download the game, you download the language within the game, and by the time you land, you know the language, or at least a few hundred words of the language. You know how to speak. So this is an amazing ability to learn fast. Go! Hi, I'm Lan. Together with me is Galit, and we're here to introduce you to Days. What would you say if the person standing on stage now could turn on the light on brain abilities that we all have but don't use? Brain abilities that can turn any learning process into one being done in high speed and large masses. Abilities that babies and infants use to learn how to live, to learn how to communicate, to learn any language. Well, this is what we're here for, to turn on that light because our brain that is able to do all that and more is manipulated once we get into a classroom. There, rather than using all these abilities, we're required to dismiss some of them and focus on being focused. We're required to memorize, use our short-term memory. You know, there's an exam. While the ability to learn by the way, the ability to gather information thanks to a photographic memory are dismissed and frowned upon. Does that work? Well, to some extent it does. I mean, we do learn things, look at us. But we don't learn as much as we can. We don't learn as fast as we can. And we don't really enjoy the process now, do we? Galit, being a pedagogical expert and me being a neuropsychologist, came to understand that there's a need and a way for a new way of learning. A way that will turn any learning process into one being done in high speed, in large masses, and playfully because the outcome is a game. So you can uh, definitely follow this company, uh, which is doing amazing work. And this was me. I'm here to help you if you want to raise money for your startup, if you need an advice, if you want to incorporate, I have another slide if you may, thank you. Um, if you want to incorporate a session about innovation in your company. And, uh, yeah. I want you to remember that uh, the future is whatever you make it. So make it a good one. And thank you very much.